Now, this, other, this, this one issue which has gotten a lot of attention in the last 10, 20 years, Lincoln and race. Was, was Lincoln a racist? What were his views about race? Malcolm X, long ago, back in the 1960s, used to say to black audiences, take down the picture. Take down the picture of Lincoln. He did not want African Americans to think of Lincoln as the great emancipator. He said, I don't want you waiting around for another white emancipator. People have to free themselves, not worry. So take down the picture. Lerone Bennett, as I said, black scholar, a longtime editor of Ebony Magazine. Again, he, like Hofstadter, pointed to this contradiction in 1858. Lincoln in Chicago. Let us discard all this quibbling about this man and the other man, this race and that race, then the other race being inferior. Let us discard all these things and unite as one people until we shall once again stand up declaring all men are created equal. That's a pretty principled statement. Same year, same campaign for the Senate, Southern Illinois. I will say then that I am not nor ever have been in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races. I am not nor ever have been in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes, nor qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermarry with white people. Moreover, from eight, at least from 1852 to 1862, 10 years, Lincoln was a strong advocate of what we have called colonization. That is to say that the African, the black population should leave the United States. He, he didn't say be deported like some people did, but still should be strongly encouraged to leave the United States for somewhere else. This is something that admirers of Lincoln, and I consider myself one, um, often find troublesome, difficult to explain. Sometimes they just ignore it. There are books about Lincoln that run 800 pages which have one sentence which said, oh yeah, Lincoln advocated colonization. But of course he didn't really mean it. In other words, you take what you like that Lincoln said, and that's what he really meant. What he said that doesn't fit the image of the great emancipator, well, he just said that for political reasons. But of course, one could easily reverse that and say, no, this is the real Lincoln, and the moral things are the political reasons, if one wants to play that game. I mean, my judgment is Lincoln is a guy who actually said what he believed, and you have to take him at his word on both on both grounds, on his dislike of slavery and his belief in colonization. When Henry Clay died in 1852, Lincoln, like many, many other people, gave a eulogy, a speech, uh, uh, eulogizing Henry Clay. Almost everyone else in their speeches talked about Clay as the great compromiser, the man who had saved the Union, et cetera, et cetera. Lincoln didn't even talk about that. He, may, he said what's great about Henry Clay is he was an opponent of slavery. He exaggerated, but it was true, but he exaggerated Clay's opposition to slavery. But he said, and Clay figured out the way to get rid of slavery. It was through colonization. You free the black people and have them leave the country. Now, Clay, he was going to force him to leave the country. Lincoln says it's got to be voluntary. But voluntary in this kind of situation is a rather odd phrase. It's like when um, 2012, when um, uh, 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 Romney, Governor Romney, the candidate, you know, for president, said about immigrants, illegal immigrants. He said, "Well, we're going to—they're going to self-deport. We're not going to kick them out. We're just going to make life so miserable for them that they will voluntarily leave. That's all voluntary. So, yeah, voluntary doesn't is not quite clear in a situation like this. How do we explain Lincoln's belief in colonization? The thing to remember is colonization was a form of anti-slavery." It was part of a plan which Clay put out and which Lincoln adopted until the Emancipation Proclamation and which he promoted. There's no secret about it. He said this in speeches. There's no mystery. It's a plan to get rid of slavery with the consent of slave owners because there's no other way to get rid of it. There's no way someone to get rid of slavery without the states abolishing slavery. No other way at this point. How do you get them to do that? Well, the plan includes a gra gradual emancipation, gradual, over many years. 
It includes monetary compensation, that is to say, they will be paid by the government for their loss of property, and it includes colonization, because the white South does not want a giant new population of free black people, and the North does not want a lot of black people moving up to the North. The only way Lincoln feels at this time slavery can end is with, coupled with colonization. Um, you can take that or leave it. You can say that's a racist view. It is, obviously, because it assumes that the United States is a white society. It assumes that um, blacks are kind of an alien presence. In fact, he's, that's what Lincoln feels. Lincoln feels that African Americans are a, a people who have been unjustly deprived of their basic natural rights, which they're entitled to, picked up and transported across the ocean in a great crime, and should become free, but they, and they should enjoy these rights, but not in the United States. They should have their own homeland. And Lincoln adds to that something that Clay didn't say, which is racism is so deep in American society that African Americans will never achieve equality here. They will never achieve equality. Therefore, it is better for them to go somewhere else. In his Peoria speech, he says, what would I do if people gave me power over slavery? He said, well, my we could just free the slaves, right? And make them our equals. My own feelings will not admit of this, and if mine would, we know that the great mass of white people will not. The great mass of white people will not accept blacks as equals. So that's the argument. I'm not defending this argument. I think as Lincoln will eventually come to abandon it, but it's the sort of inner logic. But my, my point is simply this. It does not prove you are pro-slavery to be in favor of colonization. It was possible, and indeed common at this time, to, be both, to both have racist views and be genuinely opposed to slavery. That's the problem with some of these books on Lincoln and race, where they say, well, look, Lincoln is for colonization, therefore he must be pro-slavery. But no, colonization is part of a plan to end slavery. But these ideas can coexist in Lincoln and many, many other people. Lincoln's view, basically, as he says, is another thing that is, uh, that is a little unfamiliar to us is the way people at that time talked about gradations of rights. Today, we kind of talk about our rights in a kind of ve gener generally umbrella kind of way where all our rights are thrown together. But back then, they made very clear distinction between natural rights, civil rights, political rights and social rights. Natural rights were what everybody is entitled to. That's what the Declaration of Independence says. And Lincoln says, hey, black people are entitled to those natural rights also. All men are created equal means exactly that, he says. Equal in natural rights. Life, liberty, that's why slavery is wrong, and the pursuit of happiness, that is the right to improve your condition in the social scale, in the economic order, as we've seen. Yeah, blacks should have, now, you might say, well, what's a big deal here? Say, Stephen A. Douglas said, no, Jefferson did not. That, that's not what Jefferson meant. Jefferson meant all white people. Jefferson didn't mean everyone's created equal. Black people, Indians, Chinese. No, Jefferson never meant that. Forget it. He meant all white people are equal. Blacks are not included in the Declaration, but Lincoln said, no, in that principle they are. But then there are civil rights, the right to go to court, the right to own property, the right to uh, uh, sign contracts, and then there are political rights, voting. Well, Lincoln said, those are not natural rights. Those are regulated by the majority of society. So, for example, women do not vote, but that doesn't mean they have no natural rights. And Lincoln says, well, I'm not in favor, as you heard, of blacks being given these conventional rights, civil and political rights. Social rights meant your personal associations, who you invited to dinner or sexual relations or other things. That was sort of outside the realm of law. The government was not intervening in that at the time. So that's not the issue for people, Lincoln or others. But so anyway, Lincoln says, natural rights for blacks, yes. The others, uh, I don't think so.